So you've decided to get into the fish tank hobby and already you've made a great choice and you've already done so much preparation. You've decided if you want to go salt water or tropical. You've spent hours upon hours visiting fish shops, different fish shops across the county deciding what fish you actually want. You've taken a look at tanks and you've worked out what litre you want and what your cladding or finish and style to be. You've even taken a look at decor, whether you're gonna go plastic plants or real plants. And you've even envisioned the tank at the end of the room and how it will look when it's fully scaped. You've even started telling everyone, all your family members, and sometimes you just get a little bit too excited. But then what starts to happen is the anxiety kicks in when you realize how much information that you need to take in and learn to make sure these little guys thrive in your fish tank. Wow, wife can't see that. So if I could give you a fish keeping for dummies or 101 perfect things to do to make sure these guys are thriving in the tank, you'd probably fall asleep as it's not gonna be the most exciting video on the planet. Oh. But the least I wanna do, whether you are salt water or tropical, is give you five essential tips that will help you along the way and not only look after the health and safety of these guys, but also your mentality before you get into the hobby and start to enjoy it. So I'm gonna go from number five down to one, number one being the most important, so make sure you stick around and this will pretty much get you off to the best steps possible to make sure these guys are living their best life. So tip number five, have you planned the right tank for the right fish and the right fish for the right tank? Have I said that right? Right fish, right tank, wrong tank, wrong fish. Anyway, so what I mean by that is it's easy to go into a fish store and buy a fish that's about an inch big without knowing that it's gonna to grow to two feet in length. So if you've gone and bought a two, three foot tank, which is equating to about 100 liters, you may already be putting fish in that aren't suited to that tank. So if you've planned the fish that you want first, make sure you're going to get the right tank to suit them fish. Oh God. That hurts. So make sure you know what fish are going in your tank and what the suitable tank size is. You see so many problems, especially on the likes of Facebook where they're buying things like clown, clown loaches and catfish where yes, they turn up at an inch big, but you get something like a red tail catfish which grows uh, a number of feet, or you've got clown loaches that grow to about 12 inches and ideally need a sort of six and seven foot tank. So number five, I know you, you may have your tank ready, you may have your tank bought, or you may be planning on the fish that you wanna get, but make sure that your fish and your tank match up together. So at number four, make sure you are testing your water and especially with a liquid test kit. Usually when you go into a fish store, when you buy your tank, you'll be told to buy a test kit and nine times out of 10, it's a test strip. Now, unfortunately the test strips, they aren't very accurate and they won't give you a very good result. One of the biggest tips in the top five is testing your water and with a liquid test kit. And what I'll do is I'll link some liquid test kits in the links below. And what that allows you to do is pick up on early signs that could be detrimental to the fish. And most importantly, that's nitrite and ammonia. If you're having any sort of ammonia or nitrite issues, I have done videos previously on how to deal with them, which I'll link up above. So out of all the tips, number four, again, another absolute essential, and it's testing your water with a liquid test kit. Coming in at number three is your equipment at initial setup. So before you've even put water in this tank, have you got the correct equipment and the right setup to make sure these guys thrive in the tank? Now, I'm gonna break that down into two most important things, and that's gonna be heater and filter. So with a heater, so you want to ideally make sure that with the heaters that you've bought, you're covering one watt per litre of water. To sum that up, easy maths, if you're buying a 300 litre tank, you want to have 300 watts worth of heaters. Now to go into that even further, ideally what you want then want to do is then break that or divide that over two. So 300 litre tank and you want two 150 watt heaters. So what that means is two things. One, you're not putting the heater under strain if you've only got the one in there. So it's constantly heating up, it's not strong enough and it's just going to malfunction quickly quickly doing one of two things is the thermostat's going to go and it's not going to turn off and it's going to cook your fish or it's going to malfunction altogether and it's not going to turn on and it's going to freeze your fish. Now, having the two split over the wattage or the total literage also means if one of the heaters decides to malfunction, you have a second heater there as a backup, as a precaution. Second thing that's broken down into tip number three is your filtration. There seems to be a lot of issues at the moment where tanks are being sold with filters, but unfortunately the filters and the biological filtration just isn't enough to support the tanks and if the tanks were fully stopped. Ideally, you wanna be turning or an optimum turnover rate for filtration is sort of six to 10 times per hour. So 
sum it up in a nutshell, if you've got a 100 litre tank, you wanna be turning that over around 600 litres to 1,000 litres per hour on your filter. So tip number three, you're looking at your heaters, make sure you've got enough wattage to cover the literage in your tank and ideally split it over two, and make sure your turnover rate and the amount of biological filtration that you've got in your filtration is suitable to look after the guys in your tank. So number two, oxygenating the water. And it's maybe one of the biggest things that is overlooked. You do your revision, you look into the diet, you look into the tank and so on. But one thing we don't look at is that we have to oxygenate the water for these guys to be able to breathe. Now, I have done a video, I've done a video last week about if Dave is happy and I think Dave's happy, but what I talk about in there is oxygenating the water, and I'd probably say surface maybe one too many times. So whether you're doing that with an air stone to make sure you're breaking the surface, and I'm not gonna say surface, Stop saying surface bit. So whether you're doing it with an air stone, what you need to do, bubbles themselves on the air stone do not create the oxygen. It's when they hit the water and they cause a break in the top of the water column. Didn't say surface that time, did I? Or what you wanna be doing is with the outlet of your pump is make sure it's facing up at the top of the water and making sure you are breaking the surface. Damn it! Make sure you're oxygenating the water. Like I said, it's a pretty quick way to eradicate and wipe out your fish within a sort of 24 hour period. So make sure you're getting plenty of oxygen into that water column. And coming in at tip number one, and like I said, it would be the most essential thing, and that is you have to cycle your tank before these little guys are put into the tank themselves. Now, it's probably one of the most misleading bits of information that new fish keepers get given or tend not to research or look into altogether, and the tank has to go through the nitrogen cycle before they go into the tank. Now, I may get some comments and I may get some disagreements below. Oh, I've been doing fish in cycles for a long time. Um, salt water, there's chemicals, there's bottles that can you that you can use but I'm going to give you best practice and what that means is if you're doing a fish in cycle you are exposing them fish to ammonia and nitrite yes it's been done for years but there's much better ways to do it now so what cycling the tank means is the tank has to go through the nitrogen cycle before it is suitable for fish so the tank has to build up ammonia and develop a bacteria to consume and digest that that then creates nitrite a secondary bacteria is built up to, do, to consume and deal with the nitrite and then your end product is nitrate which is then removed through water changes so take a look into the nitrogen cycle before you even start to go out and pick up the fish or go to the fish stores to collect fish make sure you have cycled your tank first you can do it for a number of different ways of whether you're putting a, a source of pure ammonia in the tank and you cycle over a sort of four to six weeks period you can put some beneficial bacteria in there while you're doing a fishless cycle to help it along the way you can do it through ghost feeding if you've got someone that already has cycled media like I'm in a lucky situation where I've got tanks with cycle media so I can transfer it over and then pretty much just add ammonia to get it cycled straight away and mature. But you have to cycle your tank before you can put fish in. So go take a look at that nitrogen cycle. Actually, no, don't go take a look at the nitrogen cycle. Click on this video here and it'll tell you all about it. So one last thing I do just really want to add. Now, they should have told you this when or when you go to buy the fish from the aquarium. Now, I said I was going to do five, but there's so many to get down into five. I had to add a bonus tip on the end. Literally, every time I think of five, I think of another one. Leave me some comments. Put comments below. Let's talk about the five essential things plus the 10 others that won't kill your fish. Make sure you acclimatize your fish. Now what that means is you can't just take the fish from the store, bring them home and pour the bag out into your, into your tank. Another tip inside that, never add aquarium water from another tank or from a fish store into yours. Make sure you net them out. So you're acclimatizing the fish from the current parameters and water that they've been sat in to get them acclimatized to your aquarium. Now you can do that a number of different ways. You can float the bags in the tank and you can drop a little bit of water in every sort of five to 10 minutes over a 45 minute period or the other way you can do it is you can pour the fish and the content into a bucket and you can then drip the water into the bucket with a drip so there's your five essential tips that I want to give you in this video that I've pretty much whittled down to cover both salt water and tropical now like I said there is a hundred and one other things that you have to go and learn but if you go through them top five from the equipment to the cycle in the tank to the water changes to making sure you've got the right heaters the right tank size and the right fish you're gonna get off to a great start after all, it's just as important to look after your mentality to make sure you're enjoying the hobby just as much as looking after these guys' house. Guys, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, and I'll see you next week.